Hello, hello. So here we have this guy, uh, Troy Casey. Uh, the YouTube is Certified Health Nut. Uh, highly recommend this guy because he's uh, yeah, he he's a lot like me, but he's uh, a little more eccentric because he's done a lot more work than I have and I and I'm I can acknowledge that and uh, appreciate that but uh this is going to be about breath work this is going to be uh showcasing some of his breath work uh that he does uh, some stuff that he's learned uh, throughout uh, different yogic pra practices, uh, Wim Hof and, and whatnot, and uh, I've done all this stuff, yeah, and, I, and I and I really dislike when people say that. Oh yeah, I've done that. Wait, that's not the point, dude. The point is doing. The point is being. The verb is. Being the being, <laughs> you are the being. So so get to being. <laughs> you continue to do it. I've heard from so many people who've had so many life experiences, and when I've mentioned something, oh yeah, I've done that. Ah, oh, god damn it. <laughs> To me, that just kind of like cuts the conversation off, and it's like, well, okay, but th that wasn't the point of even why I was bringing it up. It was to go a little bit deeper in in the understandings. So yeah, he's gonna show some uh, some breath work here, and then I'm gonna get. Uh, past that and find some points where he talks a little bit uh, about some of this, about some some of his experiences, and uh, during as I do here, I will stop and share my experiences and my inspirations that happen and come to me. Okay, good morning, party people in the place to be. So I just jumped out of a cold shower, and uh, so I'm doing a little bit of reverse um, Wim Hof, for <laughs> lack of a more popular term. Uh, I did my ice bath, my cold shower, uh, first thing in the morning. And uh, now I'm going to do my breath work. The purpose of uh, bringing all you guys on for my breath work is sometimes I get lazy or distracted and I don't do my breath work. And so... Um, <laughs> so bring this is also... Uh, I just wanted to add... I, I uh, go to yoga classes um, and that's exactly why. It's because... We get we get caught up or distracted or or whatever, and then our uh, our engagement kind of uh, becomes loose. So these things help to uh, tighten that engagement and remind us. So uh, in my yoga classes, in my uh, like workout classes, uh, in my kickboxing class, I and I mean everyone knows it. <laughs> everyone everyone sees what I what I. I do in the class and uh, sometimes they comment or come up to me and say what the fuck dude <laughs> but I just I just do my own thing like I I listen to the instruction that's, that's being given and I kind of loosely uh, go about uh, how everyone else is going going about and also it's it's uh, I like being around p 
people that are uh, engaging their body and stilling their mind. So whenever I'm engaging these uh, certain kind of classes where people are just uh, becoming super focused on breath, on uh, uh, movement and disengagement of the uh, monkey mind, then I, I can <laughs> also give them a little bit extra healing. And uh, that's been one of my the highlights uh, in this life is being able to do that with people, and especially with yoga classes, they end it with shavasana or uh, corpse pose, as in you just lay down and then uh, let go. So uh, oftentimes, whenever that happens, I. I really focus on encouraging people to really release and then and then I can kind of like uh, <laughs> uh, I don't want to share too much I can kind of uh, project myself if you want to call it that onto each person and uh, give them a healing a little bit extra understanding uh, not not directing the flow but encouraging the flow and whatever needs to come up or, or needs to be expressed or needs to be felt because a lot of times whenever people just uh, engage the body and then they're made to be still they they tap into something and then emotions, like deep emotions, come up that uh, have been suppressed, and then a release happens, and that's that's part of the process, and it's a beautiful thing. And uh, we oftentimes remind people that that's just part of it, you know. You don't need to uh, say you're sorry or, or feel, you know, whatever, feel ashamed or whatever. No, that's. Uh, a part of it and it's absolutely beautiful that that you're able to experience that amongst other people because a lot of times uh, it's very difficult to allow the the blockages and barriers to, to dissolve around other people and that that is a whole other video in and of itself to be honest The, uh, the masks that we wear, the, the traumas and pains that we hold on to, and that we have this front. Whenever, we are around, whenever most people are around other people, they have a front where they're hiding their pain, hiding their traumas. First off, because they don't want to face it, and secondly, because they want to give that image that they're okay, they're good, they can keep on doing what they need to do. But this is all a... This is acting, right? But acting in, in, in the way that you are uh, moving away from your authenticity and feeling into what you need to do to heal yourself bringing you guys on is a great way to get my breath work done so what I like to do and you guys can join me as well what I like to do is 90 conscious breaths uh, very deep inhale exhale you want to get all the gas out of your lungs as much as possible okay and also this is this is uh, pretty advanced as you can tell just by looking in the sky uh well then once he takes his shirt off and shows what he's doing uh he's been doing this for a while he knows what the fuck he's doing and uh this is also something i want to say is that uh whenever you're first starting out in something like Don't get caught up in what other people are doing or what 
other people uh, have achieved because you have to work your way up to it work your way into it and this is uh, the issue that I have with uh, almost everything in this uh, westernized, scientismized, uh, falsified way of uh, perceiving reality is that people want to uh, teach a certain way or they have been taught to teach a certain way. They have been taught to instruct in a certain way. And uh, like for me, like taking yoga classes, taking uh, kickboxing classes, um, I I recognize whenever someone has done more work than me. But then I recognize the flaw in their mentality, and that is always a painful thing uh, to to engage and continue to engage because. They want to instruct you on a certain thing, but they fail to realize that that certain thing is something that will naturally come about the more you do the work and put in the work. You don't necessarily need to put focus upon, and this is another thing, that's a whole other topic in and of itself, uh, correct form. I guess you want correct form. You wanted to achieve that the best way that you can for where you are at in the moment, but also... The form is going to come with the more your body gets used to being in alignment, the more your body gets used to engaging certain things, as in certain movements and uh, like kickboxing or, or anything that's physical. Your body is going to become more fluid, more attuned to the... Uh, the path of least resistance. And so I have yet to uh, encounter someone one-on-one -on -one that realizes this process because of, you know, what, what they have been brought up in, which is, you do it this way, you do, you do it like this, and this is, like, we're going to grain this into you. But that that is a cap that puts a limit upon your ability Yes, you can be like the, the best or rank the highest or, or win tournaments. But eventually you're going to realize, you know, there's uh, bigger tournaments. There's people that have experienced uh, deeper levels of engagement. And uh, you, you can either uh, stay your route or you can... Uh, dissolve and evolve as in adapt your um, the things that you have been taught and that are ingrained within you so as I've continued to engage my body, engage my mind, engage uh, the subtle bodies and all the aspects of the mind. I'm constantly being reminded that these levels and layers and tiers, boundaries of engagement, you feel your way into them. And if you force your way into them, you're going to risk, for one, injury, but for two, a disconnect with the understanding of how you got there, of moving beyond that, that it's just one little stepping stone to continue forth in your process of re your body, reattuning the mind and the heart and all the connection with all the bodies, spiritual, emotional, physical, all the subtle layers 
in between engagements being being gentle with the engagement but being vigilant dedicated And so I will do uh, 90 conscious breaths. We will do uh, uh, three rounds of 30. And so filling the lungs up as much as possible, opening up the diaphragm, breathing into the pelvic floor. And whenever you break something up like that, you know, you say a certain number, but then like how you engage it. Like I've done uh, certain yoga classes where you do like a hundred and eight uh some things say sun salutations moon salutations uh which which is very much harder <laughs> than sun salutations and uh that seems kind of daunting but then whenever you realize how it's broken up you kind of have a moment of rest uh and you you realize in the process that a lot of the times you find the rest within the activity. You find the moments where, where your body where your body can kind of relax in a position and you catch your breath, you catch your awareness, and you you continue. You reignite your flame and you continue forth. But these uh those kind of sun salutations, like we kind of do on the uh, solstices. Getting your whole breathing apparatus optimized so that when <laughs> stressors come on in the environment throughout the day, you're still breathing, uh, not from your panic exactly. receptors, which are in your neck which ties up your brachial plexus and gives you all sorts of neck tension. Beautiful. So this is a way to... And that's, most people, you know, are quote-unquote shallow breathers, as in they don't utilize their diaphragm at all. And whenever you don't utilize your diaphragm at all, that's also going to encourage uh, gaining weight, especially around the gut. All... Obviously, it's going to include, you know, diet as well, but just just the very act of uh, what, what we're going to see here, which is engaging uh, the core, uh, doing the nolly, d doing the uh, retention and, and uh, sucking up of the abdomen, but also, uh, I don't know if he's going to get into this, but I, I will kind of uh, talk about it a little bit, is the pushing out of the abdomen as well. Uh, uh, because you want to do both polarities, both extremes. You want to suck in and hold in all your breath. Well, you you release first, and then you suck in. And you hold that, and then you can do your nolly and your abdomen uh, exercises. But then you, you inhale everything that you can, and you uh, close your fists. <laughs> and... At first, you just want to engage your your core and your chest and your neck, your, basically your torso and your head, and you will squeeze and, and pressurize. This is the pressurization that happens, people. You pressurize your body, your system, and at first, you're not going to be able to take uh, very much of this at all before you get lightheaded, but the more you engage with it, you, you can go for a very long time uh, becoming pressurized and then uh, start to navigate different layers and densities and intensities with this pressurization. And this is going to translate in every little aspect of your life, every aspect of uh, your movement with your body, but also just how you engage your breath, how you engage your core, how you assimilate energy, how you translate your life, the things around you, the stimuli, how you 
choose to navigate things or choose and choose to deflect uh, you, you you become uh, a skilled disciple of discernment so you realize what to take in because you feel you you feel what you need to integrate and then you feel that you can just let the rest go off to the side this is transmutation this is the navigation of being being a shaman and traversing all these realms intensities and realities and mentalities and it all comes back down to the breath the spirit Calm the nervous system down, calm the autonomic nervous system down, the fight or flight or the feed and breed, rest and digest, parasympathetic. This is to activate the parasympathetic uh, stress response. Um, most of us are dealing with elevated chronic cortisol, which is fight or flight, and this, of course, can break yes. down the, the, the body. Um, over time. Thank you for saying that, dude. Uh, and then, like, the reasons why. Well, a disconnect with the mentality of your reality. Bad diet, bad habits, bad thoughts. Bad as in not beneficial. Because there's really no good or bad. There just is. So if something is causing you a certain effect and you don't like that, but it keeps happening, well, stop. <laughs> stop doing that. Switch it around. Switch it about. Turn it inside out. Breathe into it. Realize. Listen into it. Feel into it. Allow it to teach you what you need to understand in order to transcend. Uh, and so this is one of the antidotes uh, for stress. Of course, the Zen Swing is very effective for that as well. Um, and uh, in my videos, you know, uh, I do a lot of talking, but this video is not about the talking. This is about the doing. So if you guys are prepared, we're going to do three rounds of 30 breaths in through in through the nose, out through the mouth. Um, and then we're going to do uh, exhale retention. So we'll get all the gas all the way out. We'll empty all the stale air out of the lungs. And then... And that's something also you would hear frequently is the stale air. There are many ideologies and, and things that you will hear and if you feel it won't feel if you feel clearly it won't feel quite right because stale isn't the right word uh, the, 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 the ideology that comes the idea and the image that comes with that word is of like uh, stagnant and you're not going to have Essentially, what people mean when they say stale air in the lungs is you haven't breathed in deeply in and out deeply. So, because you haven't done that yet, or for a while, that's, that's just essentially what they're getting at. All the way in, all the way out. But there's no stale, <laughs> there's no stale air. Your body... Your body is more uh, intelligent and powerful and attuned with nature than you are. And by you, I mean, I'm talking to the mind here. I'm talking to people's brains, people's personas, uh, what people like to call the ego. And then, you know, there's a whole conversation upon what is ego, do we need ego, don't we need ego... Uh, what is the persona? 
what is the false image of self But there's going to be uh, an image that keeps you from engaging deeply. This is what we're talking about, uh, most of us, whenever we're talking about the false sense of self, false sense of reality, engaging things without, without integrating within. And I will do the vacuum. And yoga, I think it's called Nali, and the mastery around that is that your 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 muscles in your stomach will uh, massage your internal organs. <laughs> your abdomen. <laughs> I love this guy, dude. Uh, I fucking love this guy. He, he really reminds me a lot of me. Your abdomen will uh, definitely massage uh, your organs whenever you have the retention and you suck it all up in and you pressurize uh, in that way. And then whenever you do the nollie, you kind of uh, move stuff around and that helps. But uh, the main benefit with the nollie and the uh, engagement of the abdomen is strengthening those muscles around that, around your core here. Like, whenever you strengthen your core, that that's that translates to like strengthening the core of your beingness, of uh, your core of you know how you ground in your reality. So, strengthening these muscles are going to translate into other aspects of your life. This is why engaging. In uh, deep yoga, deep pranayama practices will transform because it translates into the rest of your life. You, you dissolve the separation between the things outside of you and the things inside of you. You become, in, you come into direct communion with the two and merge it into the one. But those muscles are going to strengthen the diaphragm. It's going to strengthen how you breathe, how you engage life. And uh, whenever you have, uh, the more and more control you have over your breath, the more and more control you're going to have over your pressures, over the blood flow, over uh, how your brain operates, over the thoughts that you allow in, the thoughts that you choose to engage. So this is going to transform your life, people. Engaging this deep breath work, engaging the core, engaging the abdomen and the diaphragm, this will transform your life because you will experience directly as within, so without. Even if you're not at a point where you're able to really understand what's happening, you will still experience it. How you're able to navigate certain things in your outer outer world, outer realms, with more ease, with more fluidity. Um, I haven't been able to master that aspect yet, so I ha! bring in my hand. Uh, he's pretty good. He he's not bad. So I mean, I love I love I fucking love humility, right? <laughs> Whenever someone is very uh, talented and they still show humility, that's fucking where it's at. Those are the kinds of people that you want to learn from. And I go down through the vagus nerve and in through the oh organs my God. that way. Thank you. Then when the reflex kicks in, I'll breathe all the way in yes. and then I'll hold that. That's just what I was talking about, and I'm pretty sure what he means by I hold that is he will pressurize. So this is what I do in my yoga classes, or just throughout my day, uh, but especially in my yoga classes. I will 
exhale all the way out and do the retention and then inhale all the way in and, and squeeze and pressurize and you'll you'll experience some shite people uh a lot of times it's it's clearing out whenever you pressurize and you can hold for a long period of time uh, and you finally let go you gain like a, a clarity your senses become a, a lot more attuned and clear so your your sense of uh, smell and your sense of uh, well I usually have my eyes closed during this not sight but your sense of hearing uh, j just sense of feeling feeling the force it's heightened usually you can go inside uh, meditation wise uh, etc yeah so uh, I'm live on Facebook now and uh, Facebook is so dead I don't know what to do with it <laughs> and so but at least it will go up for uh, let it so die maybe. baby for later when they uh, come across my Facebook. And uh, so jump in. Without further ado, we're going to do 30 conscious breaths. So in through the nose, out through the mouth, exhale retention, and inhale retention. Thanks for partying along with me, guys. Party and people. Thank you for giving me the stimulation uh, to do it as opposed to not do it. And so I always feel much better. Uh, when I do breath work. So without Absolutely. further ado, here we go, guys. Breathe with me. And he gets into it later on. If I don't get to that point, I will uh, go ahead and say it right now. Is uh, A very, very beneficial time to do this stuff is whenever you first wake up. You're still in bed. You, you just start to come back into your body from the sleep realms, uh, the dream time. And uh, whenever whenever I first wake up, I instantly just stretch. I, I just stretch. I uh, readdress my body, uh, especially depending upon the levels of engagement I've done previously. The day before, if my body may be uh, a little bit out of alignment, I will do some things to uh, adjust the scale a little structure and get it back in alignment and then uh, whenever whenever I've done like Wim Hof kind of style breath work whenever I first wake up um, my day is always just fucking fantastic always no matter, no matter what the fuck happens whatever kind of bullshit I'm, 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 I'm you know faced with just just Starting your day with, with intense breath work, intense engagement, it's going to just really enhance your experience and your perception for the rest of your day. And yeah, like I said before, this guy's advanced, so... Uh, <laughs> If you do this many, like, and you're not really uh, that used to it, then you're probably going to pass out. It's not a fucking big deal. That's just thresholds that you got to dive into, barriers that you have to face. You're going to have to face it, you know, eventually. So why not just go fucking face first into it? But yeah, I'm going to try to get into a point where uh, you can see more of his... More of his body, more of his abdomen. There we go. That's the Nawali. But he's pretty good at it, actually. Yeah. Suck in right there. And then you can even... Oh, that's fucking beautiful, dude. <laughs> this is what I do. You, you really get in there and massage. Uh, those those places you can massage your organs this way and uh, you can feel into your body uh, some of the places that maybe have uh, collected tension collected pain collected shite garbage that needs to be worked out and I will go ahead and say that 
this goes along with my video that I made with uh, the psyche, the psychedelics, but also with the chiropractors. Um, and this is something that I've been basically reminded. Because, I mean, we all already know this shite. We just got to be reminded of what we already know. Okay? So, whenever we have these kinds of pains in the body, whenever we apply pressure, it, it's going to be fucking painful. If you look into these chiropractors that I mentioned in my in that video, they apply quite a bit of pressure on the people t to where people will squirm and squeam and, and just and, and not want to deal with it. But they encourage you, like, or with, with uh, Bo Hightower, he, he kind of <laughs> forces you, <laughs> he reminds you, you signed the waiver, so uh, I'm going to get on top of you and make you feel this. Which is just fucking awesome, dude. Uh, but also, uh, some of the deep level uh, massage people, uh, high level massage people that I have uh, witnessed and learned from. I think his name is Lao Dong on YouTube. And uh, he really gets in there into the pain. And, you know, he reminds people, do you want to, do you want to experience this pain now or experience it later? Where you're not going to be able to really understand it and deal with it. You're going to... basically allow it to spread because you're not dealing with it properly so whenever we feel into the body like this we can feel if we have any blockages we can feel if we have any pain and we can press into it and this also comes into reiki you can send energy into these places but Press into it, like feel into your pain, and you're going to have all kinds of things happen. This this ties absolutely back into the breath work, because you're going to have all these things happen in your mind that tells you, "Oh my God, we got to stop doing this," or oh, oh, "We can't, we can't keep doing this," or whenever you over oxygenize your body, uh, you're going to have this monkey mind thing happen where it's like, "Oh, we have to breathe." But what are you doing? But it's like you're good don't have to do that you don't have to listen to these things the same goes with the pain you can dive down deep into it and pressurize it and send a lot of energy into it and it's going to be, be very fucking painful but that's eventually your body is going to get what the fuck is going on and it's going to start to flow the pathways are going to start to open up and the blockages are going to start to be released. And this is the magic of pressurizing your system, applying pressure, engaging the pain, allowing the body to do its fucking thing. Okay, man, my, I want to try to get into some places here where he's talking a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, hey, Marshall. <laughs> ah, these social media devices are funny. I get lightheaded, uh, very... 
case, I'm full steam ahead with my mission and vision uh, for the planet over here in, uh, in Santa Monica. And so my mission is to raise human consciousness and change all systems on the planet Earth. My vision is clean air, water, soil, and equitable systems for all mankind in my lifetime. That's not... Oh my gosh. That, that's powerful, but that, that's not possible. Uh, if this guy... Uh, wants to live, you know, the, the normal kind of human lifetime. Yes, we can see progress, but we also have to, and this is part of the process as well, is realizing uh, how deep that we've gone and been led into corruption and degradation of not just our own bodies, of uh, the manipulation, the The ignorance of uh, not realizing what has been given to us, not realizing what we are, not realizing the connection with our mother and our the Mother Earth and the All Father, not realizing that we are all connected. Not realizing that you don't really fucking need to eat all that much of anything in order to, to survive and also thrive to bring your system back to life fast, people. There are many layers and levels of fast that you can fast from certain things. You can fast from certain engagements. You can uh, just do a fast on maybe... If you're just getting into it, like just a fast from uh, meat, and then you can go to a layer deeper, a fast of just liquids, and uh, you can go then to a fast of just water, and then if you do that, you want to do distilled water, and then you can also get into the layer of utilizing your own waters, and that's going to be some deep level healing. And understanding and clearing, because uh, your your Orin just just uh, do your own experiments with it. Realize what Orin does whenever you have it uh, clean certain like uh, objects, like say uh, copper or metal or certain things like this. This is what happens inside of you. Uh, it rejuvenates certain aspects of your beingness and also clears away the garbage. So um, that's what I do every day. I keep myself tuned up so that I can go out and affect change and speak uh, my dreams and visions into existence um, I mean that's that's essentially all we can do right well that's that's one aspect of it but another aspect is taking that time to dive into meditation and solitude and realize uh, get a firm attunement to your foundations of what you are re Remember all of your membranes, all the aspects of yourself. And be clear and help other people elevate their uh, spirit, their, their, their consciousness, tune their, their, their body and mind. And so that's my mission. Uh, and that's why I do these practices to keep me tuned up in this modern world that is, uh, you know, it's a little chaotic sometimes. So, <laughs> Justin, I hope that answered your question. So, about 20 minutes or so. And so, I get lightheaded quite quickly with most breathing practices. Let me see if I can read this. And that's going to be most people that aren't used to breathing in deeply. Allow me to read this. Ah, these social media devices are funny. I get lightheaded uh -huh. uh, very quickly, says... Um, Deline, 
uh, with most breathing practices. I'm a very shallow breather. Okay, good. So this is a good practice for you, uh, Deline. And so I recommend if you get lightheaded, you guys do this while you're laying Lying down. down. Yes. So a great way to practice breath work is doing it first thing uh, when you wake up. Yeah, and okay. So yeah. before so. you get distracted. Um, so just lie in the bed, wake up. And you can do breath work many different ways. Um, sometimes when I like to get out of my head, I just like to start doing uh, breath of fire. So that's in through the nose and out through the nose. That really blasts the monkey mind. It just keeps you centered and, and you're doing... It blasts... Uh, and you can go to uh, Zen Atman and he has all the layers and levels of breathing and what frequency you're tapping into there. What uh, brain waves. Also, shout out to Zenat Man. Shout out to all you guys. But uh, I know I kind of. Uh, put him on blast a little bit on my last video. And, uh, <laughs> and then I commented on his most frequent one, and he. He. Uh, not light, what is it called, whenever you hit the fucking uh, star or the uh, heart button or whatever. Uh, he hit all those for every comment but mine. <laughs> Which is beautiful, but I mean, mine still had the most likes. <laughs> because uh, it, was, it was a flow of, uh, of gnosis that I shared uh, through through poetic engagement. And, and that's that's basically why I like to comment on people's stuff is I like to share my uh, poetic gnosis with people and hopefully uh, other people see that. So yeah, uh, breathing just, just through the nostrils, that's going to like basically clear out the brain. Uh, it's going to super uh, charge your fucking brain and it gets you right into that point where you're only thinking about your breath you can only engage your breath you're not uh, it takes you right out of thought and just right into the breath yeah. so when you reach a certain point of breath of fire where you've had enough then you do the retention and then there, there's something that happens when you do the re retention both exhale and in inhale so my advice is just play with it i'm giving you a poetic license <laughs> poetic license but uh so, so what I like to do is, is do the Wim Hof method, and then um, at the end of each little round, or whenever I feel, I will do like the retention and just uh, do the Nawali and hold, and then I will do the reverse of that, breathe in all the way and pressurize. Arr! And uh, this is kind of like sending all of that fresh prana that <laughs> the fresh ass prana that you've collected you pressurize it and you send it throughout all of your body and this is going to immensely help with people to have this is going to help with anything and everything any kind of ailment that you have if you have problems <laughs> with blacking out this is going to uh, this breath work is going to engage it's going to help you engage directly with uh, why you are experiencing these things and blacking out. And it's because, ultimately, there's some blockages happening. Um, there's, there's a couple deeper things that can happen whenever we experience things like blacking out. And sometimes it's because we are uh, trying to transmute and, and integrate uh, higher levels of energy and our body and our organs aren't uh, properly tuned up for that. So this breath work helps us to tune our organs up. Attune our organs to this frequency. And once you really get into it, like you, you can kind of uh, almost just directly go into that blackout state and work with it, work in, in inside of it, and then and then work through it.
that's something that I did not mention to Danny Skylark that I kind of wanted to go into a little bit deeper is uh, the purpose of these pressurizations, the purpose of the breath work, and how it directly translates to the blacking out or the uh, feeling lightheaded or kind of even out of body a little bit. Or, you know, you'll experience things like your body becoming very cold. And that's because all your awareness is going to a certain organ. And it's trying to uh, dissolve the, uh, the blockages there. So once you uh, really tap into this breath work and engage these that deeper organic <laughs> levels of engagement with your organs, And the flow will happen, will be unimpeded, and you can uh, start to really understand and work within these levels of blacking out or these levels of um, being in immense pain. You'll start to like, kind of slowly allow the flow to happen, and then you can more and more get in tune with that and just eventually allow the flow. Whoosh. Send permission to go go ahead and play with the breath work, whatever works for you. You can even do very slow breath work. So you can do you can do uh, nostril breathing. So you can go in through the nose. Yeah, and this is a uh, this is probably more I don't want to make it too long, but this is an alternate nostril breathing. Uh, just look into pranayama. There's so many different uh, ways to engage your breath. Uh, this alternate nostril breathing is very uh, awesome for attuning the hemispheres in the brain, attune, attuning the uh, balances within the body. So uh, whenever I first went to an acupuncturist, uh, she recommended me a book of pranayama because of the things I requested from her. And she was like, no one's ever requested this from <laughs> from me before. And she is like uh, one of the main acupuncturists in, in this region that I'm in. As in like, she, I don't know, the whole organization or whatever. But, uh... I did not realize like the process of going into like uh, these types of uh, healers or modalities. It's like uh, the first visit is like uh, seeing where you're at, and then you got to keep going back, you know, two or three or more times in order to get like the, the deep work in. But she made it very clear that you know <laughs> the work that I was seeking was in deeper uh, layers and so I, I bought this pranayama book and it the thing with books uh, we, we divine them we, we there's, there's really no need to go through the whole fucking book and then just to have little aspects and pieces that really speak to you once you really uh, are attuned with uh, divining and tapping into and uh, aspects of as within so without, then you can just open up a book and it, it will be what you need to see right then and there. So one of these things was uh, accessing cellular breathing and um, engaging this kind of uh, breath work and, and doing it so slow and subtly that eventually your body becomes very very hot and uh, your 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 cells start to you basically start to entrain your cells to breathe for themselves and then uh, you will have this immense sweat that happens as your body expels the things that it's not needed anymore. 
your body expels the blockages so that all your cells can start breathing again. So this is what I recommend whenever you do alternate nostril breathing. Do it with a... Uh, how Feel into it. Uh, whatever feels best. If you want to utilize the... Uh, the breath of fire or the uh, the kind of breathing where you're like oh. it sounds like you're in a cave do that uh, but but uh, where the magic is with this is whenever you tap into the doing it as slow as possible. Then uh, you're going to get into those states and it's kind of like uh, you'll tap into whenever you do deep Wim Hof uh, exercises and breath work or different kind of pranayama uh, breath work. Uh, your mind will start doing some, <laughs> some, some pretty weird things and start trying to convince you to stop what you're doing. But if you can just keep doing it, Keep engaging in this uh, slow breathing. Eventually, you'll experience what uh, what I read in that book, which was uh, called they called it cellular cascade, and that's kind of where your your cells tap into what you're doing. They tap into uh, an energy and prana that you're enlivening them with, and then. Your body gets very fucking hot and you have this sweat that happens. And then also, uh, I'll mention that you can do alternate nostril breathing without using your hands. Uh, just using your mind and engaging, like just, just thinking about like just breathing in through the right nostril. And breathing out through the right nostril. And then the other one. And eventually you will feel that you are doing this. And it's a little trippy at first. Because it's like, wow, how the fuck am I doing this? But that just comes back into the power of the breath and the mind. And how intimately connected they are. And, and how intimately connected... Whenever you access deep level breathing, your monkey mind will come and do full display as in it will try to grab at your awareness as, as much as it can to try to stop you from this level, deep level breath work. Is that really air you're breathing, Neo? This is, this is what happens uh, whenever you get out of your mind and so into your breath. Especially whenever you get into like body work, like Tai Chi, uh, combining breath and body, or even just anything and everything. Uh, I've accessed, accessed this state during intense levels of uh, working out to where my body doesn't necessarily need to breathe like we're used to breathing. It just, uh, uh, the pathways both the in and out pathways are open so that each little movement and engagement that happens with the body it's, it's expressed in the breath and it's uh, so fine tuned that you don't uh, if, you, if you do engage the breath in like uh, the more normal states or are you even uh Engage the mind in that you uh, engage thought that immediately takes you out of that state. And I've accessed this uh, place uh, many times as well during uh, kickboxing where I'm just flowing and I, I don't need to breathe really anymore. It's not necessarily that I'm pressurizing it's just that I'm, I have both channels open, the sun and the moon channels within the body. And once you tap into accessing your sun and moon channels and collapsing them, you, you access your central channel. And if you do this during meditation, it will be like a uh, 
dissolving that happens uh, within the body, you access a central channel uh, and it becomes very vibratory. Whenever you access this during uh, levels of engagement, engaging the body, uh, you kind of you kind of just step out of the body a little bit, and you bear witness to how your body flows with these movements, and you're not necessarily in thought, as in you're not you're not directing the movement, you're kind of just allowing it, and you you are divinely tapped into inspiration. And you just witness what's happening. You are along for the ride. You you pull up the surfboard and you just ride the wave of engagement. Ride the sine wave. So yeah, that's it for now. Um, it all ties back into the breath. The breath work. This is where <laughs> this is where we start in this embodiment with our first breath, and then this is where we end with our last breath. But and this is where I like to encourage people to have conscious death experiences. You can experience your quote unquote last breath while you're still alive. You can engage it. You can understand what it means to be in a state where you you don't need breath. It's the no breath because you're opening up both channels. And how I like to uh, kind of describe it is you allow your heart to breathe for you. Each palpitation of the heart is a breath and a prana a fluctuation that's happening. And your breath attunes to this. And then you're able to tap into uh, a lot of deeper states and levels of beingness. And you're able to stay there and withstand uh, different modalities. You're able to swim within certain layers with more ease, with more fluidity. So this is this is what we're talking about, as within, so without. You you are able to witness in your quote unquote outer world the correlation of the inner work that you do with the breath, with the cultivation of awareness, with the meditation, with the focus. It translates into all aspects of life and beingness and inner standings. So yeah, get into it, feel into it, breathe into it, realize what you are. Peace.